praise the Lord for yet another day that he has made. And we rejoice and be glad in it. I want to invite us to commit this evening before the Lord and uh, trust him that he will guide us, he will speak to us. Uh, we have God's quorum. The Bible tells us where two or three are gathered in his mm, presence. There he is in their midst. And I think we are quite well balanced. We have both gender here. Uh, males and females, uh, my brothers and sisters, welcome. Let's start with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your love and faithfulness to us. Lord, we come acknowledging our failures, our sinfulness, our inefficiency. Lord, forgive us and cleanse us from all the evil thoughts, the evil words, and evil actions. Wash us clean by the blood of Jesus, that, Lord, we may be as white as snow. We may be the clean vessels, vessels of honor that you have called us to be. That, Lord, we shall do your purposes. We shall be your ambassadors in our time. Just like your word tells us that after David had fulfilled the purposes of God, he rested, he died, and he was gathered to his ancestors. Father, I pray that each one of us shall purpose to do your will. The Lord will commit to fulfill your purposes. You've given us gifts and talents. You've given us abilities and resources. May we use these resources, Lord, to the glory of your name. That wherever you have placed us, O oh God, that is our sphere of influence. And so help us that we can be effective witnesses for you. Lord, forgive us where we have been reluctant, where we have been negligent, where we have ignored the great commission and have made it a great omission. Forgive us, O oh Father. Rekindle that prompting by the Holy Spirit in us because we know we cannot do it in our own strength. We cannot serve you faithfully and effectively in our own abilities because even with all the giftings and abilities you have given us, without you we are nothing. But we thank you for the promise and encouragement that we can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives us the strength. Yes, Lord, we are stronger with you. We are well able and with you, we are the majority. So, Lord, we even pray, asking you that to help us, oh Lord, from the fatigue of the day, from the fatigue of the week. Today is a Thursday. It's one of those days that are quite challenging. We've passed through midweek. We are about to end the working week and getting into the weekend. So the emotions can also be challenged. But, Lord, we ask that you'll uphold us with your righteous right hand, that you'll strengthen us as your word encourages us, that, Lord, we shall wait upon you so that you can renew our strength. And when our strength is renewed, we can mount up with wings as eagles. We can run and not be weary. We can walk and not faint. And so, Lord, we invite you to talk from, take over from us, Talk over from me, Lord, even as I come to speak, cleanse my lips, cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind, cleanse my whole being, O oh Lord, that I'll be the vessel that you have chosen, that you purpose to bring your word this evening. And I want to pray for all my brothers and sisters who have logged on and the others who may log on later, the others who may listen to the message later. I pray, Father, that you will speak to each one of us. Speak to us by name, O oh God. Speak to us and meet each one of us at our critical points of need. Father, we need you. We need you and we surrender all to you. We surrender emotions. We surrender our struggles and challenges. We surrender our work. We surrender our families. We surrender our children in school. We surrender our businesses. We surrender everything to you, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that come and reign, reign in your power, reign supreme, O oh God. And because you've given us power and authority, we take that power in your name to disorganize all the works of the devil. 
we overcome them by the blood of Jesus and by the word of our testimony. Lord, you have given us power over all the powers of the devil. And so, Lord, we trample over them. And Lord, we invite you to arise and scatter all your enemies who are enemies. Arise, O oh God, and return to us, your people. The Lord, as we share your word this evening, it will come out clearly. It will come out the way you expect it to, and it will accomplish that which you have purposed it, O oh God. And Father, that each one of us will be ministered to, and none of us shall remain the same. And Father, at the end of it all, may glory and honor return to you. We build and plant your presence. We invite your Holy Spirit. We invite your angels who are ministering spirit to minister to us, O oh God, to encourage and strengthen us in our weariness, O oh God. Renew our strength, empower us, and really revive us. Revive us, O oh God, that even as we hear your voice, indeed we shall not harden our hearts, but we shall be obedient, we shall be willing, and we shall eat the good of the land. For this we ask that even the things that we have not touched, but you know that we need them. Lord, you who is all-knowing and through your Holy Spirit who intercedes for us with words that cannot be uttered, with groans that cannot be uttered. And our Lord Jesus Christ who is seated at your right hand, who also intercedes for us, the Lord our request shall be made known to you. And so Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord and my Redeemer, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. So our topic this evening is, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. If you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. As we know, we are focusing on the voice of God, and we have already had uh, different sessions about the voice of God. And so as we look at, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. I want to invite us to read from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Hebrews 4, 1 to 11. The particular phrase comes from verse 7, but uh, let's read in context so that we can understand more. And as we read, uh, the heading in many uh, versions of the Bible is about the promised rest for God's people. Uh, so we are looking at hearing the voice of God, not hardening our hearts, so that we can be able to have the promised rest as people of God who are obedient. And as we do this, I welcome you once again. Uh, we want to thank God for the new month. We want to thank him that we're in the last quarter of the year. We thank him for all that he has carried us through from January to date, October the 5th. And uh, we thank God that he has done many things among us. And we rejoice with those who rejoice, but also we empathize with those that are having challenges and struggles and my prayer is that God will continue to minister to each one of us because he is able to do much more than we can ask or even imagine. Uh, so let's read Hebrews 4, 1 to 11. Uh, the word of the Lord says, God's promise of entering his rest still stands. So we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did, it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. As for the others, God said, in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my rest my place of rest, even though this rest has been ready since he made the world. We know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my rest. They will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter, 
but those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now, if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall. This is the word of the Lord. So we see from the scripture already talking about the passage, the phrase, our topic, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart or your hearts. In plural, in hearts, but as individual heart. And uh, there are many repetitions that we shall see later. And uh, I just want us to look at what it means to harden one's heart. What does it mean for you to harden your heart? What does it mean for me to harden my heart? What does it mean for us to harden our hearts? And according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, hardening of heart means to stop having kind or friendly feelings for someone. I'll repeat hardening of heart according to Merriam Webster dictionary it means to stop having kind or friendly feelings for someone it also means to stop caring about someone or something you are stop caring for people or for things around you but it also means to be emotionally distant and it unresponsive you are disconnected so to speak and um, when we refer to the topic that we have and this context we see that this relates to the Israelites who refuse to obey God the Israelites refused to obey God so they were disconnected from him they were distant they did not care about him they were not friendly and they were not kind. So instead, they became rebellious. They refused to obey God. They became rebellious to his commands. And he had commanded them to follow his instructions as they were in the wilderness from the slavery in Egypt on their way to the promised land. But instead, the scripture tells us repeatedly that they complained, they argued, they tested God, they tried God, they disobeyed him. They were complaining about everything and anything, about food, even when he gave them food and it was too much for them, they complained it was too much, it, it was monotonous when there was no water, they complained about water when Moses took time on the mount when he had gone to receive the commandments, they complained. And so they were a complaining lot. They were a murmuring lot. They were distant from God. They refused to obey him. And uh, we find this in Exodus chapter 16, verse 3. Exodus 16, verse 3. Also, Exodus 17, 1 to 7, Exodus 17, 1 to 7, but also Numbers chapter 20, verse 3 to 13. Numbers 23 to 13 is where we get the background to how the people of Israel disobeyed God, how they hardened their hearts. 
Allow me just uh, read two verses in Exodus 17, that is verse 3 and 7. And the Bible says, But tormented by thirst, they continued to argue with Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? Then verse 7, Moses named the place Massa, which means test, and Meriba, which means arguing, because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord by saying, is the Lord here with us or not? And I know that um, we can blame these people and say, ah, but what kind of people are they? You know, they have seen what God has done. They have witnessed the food they never knew. It has miraculously happened. And God is getting them water from the rock and everything. But my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, it's not a thing of the Israelites past. It is a thing of us today as well. Are there no times when we complain? Are there no times when we really harden our hearts, both to God but even to people around us, that we are just you know, irresponsive? We are just disconnected. I wonder the lot we are today, maybe because of modernity and uh, civilization, so-called civilization, we seem to be so impersonal. Sometimes I wonder, well, someone uh, helped me to say, but don't you know that that's what the scripture says, people will be lovers of themselves, they will be lovers of money, they will be lovers of things, they will be disobedient even to parents. It is scripture, yes, but uh, as uh, it also goes elsewhere, what to those for whom certain scriptures are fulfilled, like how Judas betrayed the Son of God. Woe unto us if we harden our hearts and we are disobedient to God, because we know that the Israelites who disobeyed, many of them died in the wilderness, as we'll see a little, a little more later. But when we are disobedient, we lose out a lot, as we shall also see. So I pray that... Uh, God will help us because this phrase in our topic, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts, is repeated in several passages of the Bible. And that repetition, as we know it, is for emphasis. I know that we are given the Holy Spirit at our conversion. But you know, when we also do not listen to the Holy Spirit, if we quench him, then we also end up hardening our hearts and we lose out on what God has intended for us. So as we look at what this phrase actually means, uh, going back to verse 4 of, I mean mean verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 4, especially in the New International Version, the scripture says, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So what is this that was spoken through David? We find this in Psalm 95. Psalm 95, the psalm itself does not clearly state the writer, but when you relate now uh, what is written in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7, and Psalm 95, you understand that the author was David. And so let's um, read verses 6 to 11. Psalms 95, verse 6 to 11, the Bible says, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, 
the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did at Meribah, as you did that day at Massa in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested me. They tried me, though they had seen what I did. For 40 years, I was angry with that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts uh, ha whose hearts go astray and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. This same passage is also repeated in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 to 11, and even in other passages in that same chapter, uh, Hebrews 3. And we know that repetition is for emphasis. And so we just sing out a few things. What are the areas in which we harden our hearts? What areas do we harden our hearts in or in these particular passages uh, where is God telling people that they have hardened their hearts? One of them is the lack of faith in God. When we lack faith in God, it means we are hardening our hearts. And when we lack faith in God, it means we go astray, we backslide, we doubt him, and we do things our own way. Hebrews 3 verse 10, Hebrews 3 10, the Bible says, that is why I was angry with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my ways. He has spoken this, he's repeating it. And even in verse two of chapter four of Hebrews, Hebrews 4, 2, also God says, for this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they did not share the faith of those who listened to God. So when we lack faith in God, when we go astray, we backslide, we doubt, and we do not listen to God. We know very well that the Israelites in Moses' time, Moses the servant of God, they knew about God, but they did not have faith in him. They did not trust him. They saw the miracles God performed, but they did not care about him. They hardened their hearts about God. They did not have a personal relationship with him. And as I mentioned earlier, this is not only a problem in the Israeli community then, it is still a problem today. We know that unbelief prevented them from entering the promised land. And we too can be prevented from entering the peace of God, accessing his grace and getting the gift of salvation because the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, I'll paraphrase, that we are saved by grace through faith. It is the grace of God is not our works that no one should boast. For instance, we can boast by being very good Anglicans or good Pentecostals or good, I do not know what, but that does not help us at all. What matters is our faith in God. So we may claim to know God, but prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, Isaiah 29, 13, and Jesus Christ in Matthew 15, 8 to 9, Matthew 15, 8 to 9, they both say that these people honor God with their lips but their hearts are far from him. We might be trying to honor God, my brothers and sisters, but we need to be careful that we are not simply offering lip service, that we are not simply being religious. We are not just attending services, fellowships, and meetings like this when our actions 
are contrary. That means that we need to have a constant commitment to God, our faith in God by accepting the gift of salvation, by recommitting to him and continuously repenting so that we affirm our faith in God. For we know that it's only through Jesus Christ and he shed blood that we can be saved. And that this salvation, Jesus himself said that because of the increase of iniquity, because evil shall increase, many people's love for God will grow cold. But he counsels us that only those who hold firm to the end will be saved. Yes, thank you if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But yes, we may say, ah, I did, it is enough. You have to work at your salvation with fear and trembling as we are also cautioned by St. Paul in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Let's work at our salvation with fear and trembling. Let's continue to have faith in God and check ourselves so that we do not be like those who harden their hearts. For in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible has told us, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. Let us be careful that none of us are found to have fallen short of entering that rest of God, the promise of God of eternal rest, which begins here on earth after we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when we have peace with him, but also is for eternity. He affirms to us in verse 3 of chapter 4 of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 3 of Hebrews, part A, he says, for only we who believe can enter his rest. Only those who believe and continue to believe. So my brethren, that is one clear way where God demands our obedience, demands us to be willing to be able to have connection with him. That if we lack faith in him, then we are hardening our hearts. The second thing that has also come through very clearly is disobedience. We harden our hearts when we are disobedient and when we are rebellious. And in verses 7 and 8 of Hebrews 3, Hebrews 3, 7 to 8, the scripture says, So as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did. God is warning us, brethren. He has already mentioned in Hebrews 4, 6, Hebrews 4, 6, that so God's rest is there for people to enter. But those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. How many times do we disobey God? How many times do we disobey the established authority in our homes, in our schools, those who are studying in our workplaces, even in church setting? Just like the Israelites, many of us engage in unnecessary arguments complaints, tests, trying others and God. And, you know, we end up being overtaken by anger and all this leads us to disobedience. You know, you can have a fellowship of brethren and you're discussing something, a simple thing, and you just see people's face turn, you see people's arguments, and I mean, I can't do this, you know, the other and the other's like, eh. Hey, has the blood of Jesus passed here, really? You know, we while growing up, we used to have this saying that if for the brethren who whose lives don't seem to be transformed, it looks like the blood of Jesus really 
they, they did not bathe in it. They did not wash their clothes in the blood of Jesus. So he said, ah, the blood of Jesus has not touched these ones. Let us be reminded, my brothers and sisters, that Moses and Aaron, who are the leaders of the Israelites from Israel, I mean from Egypt to Israel, to, to Israel or to the promised land, where people like us, they did their best, so to speak. Uh, recently, by the grace of God, I went back to Egypt and Israel. And uh, from our own experiences as the team who are traveling, I could identify clearly with these people, with Moses and Aaron, that there are many complaints, there are many arguments, there are many ways of disobedience and rebellion. And we know that both Aaron and Moses missed the promised land. I reached a point and asked God that if it's not your will, Lord, let me not go on this trip. But I think it was his will. He wanted me to have another encounter. And it can be so challenging. Moses had this anger challenge. You remember that when he came from the mountain and the people had started worshiping idols, he just had to break the two stone tablets that contained the Ten Commandments. We know that Aaron, when he was pressured by the people, he had to compromise and had to make them calves. He had to make them idols. And I do not know about you and me. What is it? that is causing us to compromise, that is causing us to act in anger, in complaint, in arguments, in disobedience and rebellion to God. May we own up so that we do not act in a way that hardens our hearts and we end up on the wrong side with God. And even as I speak about this, that we harden our hearts by lacking faith in God by being disobedient or rebellious. What are some of the consequences of hardening our hearts? What are some of the consequences of hardening our hearts? I have a few. And uh, one of them is that we face God's judgment. When we harden our hearts, the consequence, one of them is you face God's judgment with his wrath and his anger. In Hebrews 3.11, Hebrews 3.11, the Bible says, So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And still in Hebrews 4.5, Hebrews 4.5, we are told, the scripture says, but in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So they were judged and God acted in his anger. And as we may remember, the Bible tells us that it is a fearful thing. It is a terrifying thing. It's a horrible thing to fall in the hands of the living God. It's terrible for us to be found on the wrong side of God. Leave alone the people here on earth. Let's be careful that we do not face the judgment. And uh, we know that the generation of the elders, those who did not believe in God, they missed out on the promised land, including Moses and Aaron, as we've shared earlier. All the elders, they had to die in the wilderness. God had to take them around for a whole 40 years. We are told it could have taken a very short time, but he did it so that all those who did not believe in him were punished and they missed out on the promised land. And uh, we know this promised land is physical, but if we are not careful, we will also be judged for eternal separation from God, we will miss out on heaven. We will end up in hell. And I pray and hope that none of us is desirous to go that side. We may not pay attention and just live 
far, as people say. But when you live with eternity in mind, we shall pay attention and may God help us so that we do not face his judgment. Secondly, the other consequence is that we miss out on the blessings of God. Many of the blessings of God are for those who obey. And in Numbers 20, verse 12, Numbers 20, 12, the Bible says, But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land I am giving them. They only saw the land, but they never stepped in it. We too need to be very careful, as cautioned in Hebrews 4.11. Hebrews 4.11, the Lord cautions us that, so let us do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God, as the people of Israel did, we will fall. The writer to the Hebrews spoke to the people then, but he still speaks to us. And I also want to implore us that we will be careful, we'll do our best to enter God's rest, to enter and remain in personal relationship with him, to have peace with him. Because the Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. Sometimes we are so quick to say, oh, rest in peace when someone has died. Brethren, I'm very careful about that scripture because scripture is very clear. I mean, I'm I'm careful about that phrase saying rest in peace because I'm not so sure. It is really God who knows, but it depends a lot on our relationship with him because he says repeatedly in Isaiah that there is no peace for the wicked. But again, in Isaiah 57, 1 and 2, that's where he says, you know, he takes away the godly and he helps them to escape the trouble in this world. And it is those who die in the Lord that are to rest in peace. The same happens in Revelations where he says, blessed are those who die in the Lord. So if someone clearly has not died in the Lord, has not obeyed the Lord, has never had a personal relationship with God, even if we say how many times rest in peace, uh, like some of our friends in the Roman Catholic faith who even have to say so many uh, masses, you know, many prayers saying that we you pay money so that they make so many prayers for the person to move from purgatory to heaven or from hell to purgatory. Whatever we do, we are wasting time. So my prayer and encouragement to us is that we'll be careful not to disobey God. We'll be careful not to lack faith in him. And we will avoid the consequences of facing his wrath his judgment, and also missing out on his blessings. And in conclusion, I remind us to look at Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. Jeremiah 9, I mean 17, 9 and 10, the Bible says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond sure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the, heart, the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. So the only way out because of our hard-heartedness, because of our sinfulness, is to allow the Lord to search our hearts, to allow the Lord to examine us. And uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16 to 18, Deuteronomy 6, 8, 16 to 18, we are also told, you must not test the Lord your God as you did when you complained at Massa. You must diligently obey the commands of the Lord your God, all the laws and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we need to be honest with ourselves. We need to allow God to search us. We need to allow him to circumcise us. We do spiritual surgery. I know that uh, <clears throat> there are people who these days are also thinking, you know, there are benefits of 
circumcision for the males, and so they want to do that. It is okay, the physical one, but the spiritual surgery is better because it's not just a ritual, but we are told in Hebrews 4.9, Hebrews 4, 9 affirms, says, so there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. We need to have our hearts circumcised. We need to have our hearts renewed and modeled towards God so that our rest will be here on earth, having peace with God, and it will continue to eternity. I also invite us to heed the words in a song as we end the words in a song, Trust and Obey, uh, I know that singing on this platform is not very easy, but um, let me try. Uh, some of us can follow. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. We'll go to the last stanza. Then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet. Oh, we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do. Where he says we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. It's my prayer that you and me will continually walk with the Lord in the light of his word, continually dwell in his word, glean on the word of God, that we will enjoy his glory, that we will be willing to do his good will, that he will abide with us always as we trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So let's be obedient and not harden our hearts that we can have the sweet fellowship with him as we sit as it's his feet to be taught by him, to learn from him in prayer, that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to us and will walk side by side with him always, that we'll always do what he says and will go where he sends us. As I mentioned, sometimes we have made a great commission, a great omission, but may we seek for revival, may we learn to get back to do what God wants us to do so that we will not fear anything, not even fear hell or, et or eternal suffering, but we will know that when we trust and obey the Lord, we will enjoy his benefits. You may be here, brother, sister. Maybe you have never known the Lord or you will listen to this message later. I ask that the Lord will prompt you to be able to listen to him, to be able to yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God convicts us of sin, of righteousness and judgment so that we may come to the knowledge of the truth. He does not want anyone. God does not want anyone to die in their sins, but his desire is that all may be saved. But you may also be there and for one reason or the other, you have slid off. You have fallen back. You have gone astray. I pray that the Lord will still prompt you that you will be able to return to the Lord. Trust and obey him for there is no other way to be happy than to obey, than to trust him, that our faith shall remain in him. Even us who are consistent with the Lord, in one way or the other, we have fallen short. We are weak. I pray that the Lord will help us to be strengthened this evening that we'll choose 
to commit, not to harden our hearts, but to listen, to be willing, to have faith in the Lord, to obey him so that we enjoy all his blessings. May we pray as we conclude. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for speaking to me and speaking through me to your people. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to challenge us to be the kind of people that you want us to be, that will not be like the Israelites who wasted in the wilderness, who will not be like Moses, whom you told to speak to the rock, and he, in his anger he had to strike it, who will not be like Aaron, who had to make calves for the people to worship as though they are gods. Lord, we have made many idols in our own lives. We have disobeyed you in many ways. I pray that, Lord, you'll have mercy upon me. You'll have mercy upon my brothers and sisters. You'll have mercy upon our people, oh God. The Lord, you'll guide us by your spirit that he will continually, as he continually prompts us, as he continually convicts us, that we shall yield, oh God. We shall not harden our hearts but we shall be willing. We shall be able to repent. The Lord, we shall obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our times of need. Even as we have shared your word, Lord, where things have gone well, may glory and honor return to you. Where there's anything that has been of error, I ask that you forgive me, Lord, and cleanse me. And empower us, O oh Lord God, to continue to be your faithful servants to the glory and honor of your name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We thank you. Thank you, Reverend Betty, our own, for the wonderful sharing. I apologize. I start with apologizing. My network was not okay at the beginning. And I really apologize. I ask you all the all saints family to forgive me. But now I at least later it logged on. And once again, thank you, Reverend Betty, for sharing that wonderful someone about hearing the voice of the Lord and not hardening our hearts. And uh, and uh, just let me conclude also in just the final prayer and we, we close. Uh, Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for that you love us, that you you, you sent, because, because you love us, you sent your only son. You went all the way to send your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross that we may be redeemed, that the human nature we may be redeemed. Lord, in John 15, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. I pray that you help us to hear your voice. I pray that you teach us to hear your voice. Lord, we come, Lord, we come in repentance uh, where we have disobeyed, in, uh, walked in disobedience, where we have lacked faith, Lord, in trusting you, and we have ended into grumbling and complaining, just like the Israelites did. I pray that you will forgive us, wash us from head to toe with your blood. Be gracious to us, O oh God. Father, I pray that you forgive us for disobedience. Where we have walked in rebellion, Lord, my master, I ask that you forgive us. Where we have not hearkened to the Spirit of the Lord, where we have not we shut out the Holy Spirit where we have quenched the Holy Spirit. Lord, be merciful. Be gracious to us, O Lord. Lord, in the world we are in, there is so much noise. Uh, there is so much noise on internet and everywhere. Very many things shouting on us. But I pray that this evening, your Spirit will help teach us to shut all other voices. And that only yours, Lord, we, we will hear. And we will hearken to it and will obey. In the name of Jesus, Father, we, we, we silence all the other voices in the name of Jesus. We silence all the plans of the evil, all the plans of the devil that has misled us in many ways. I pray that you will cancel and nullify. We rebuke you, devil, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, take your place in our hearts. Take your place in our families. Take your place in our devotional time at home. When we are... When we are Alone with you, I pray that you will silence all our voices and that you will hearken to your voice and that, and, and that you will show us the way, Lord, to go. For you all, for Lord, we know that you alone are the Alpha and Omega. You know the, everything, the beginning from the end, and you have good plans for us. For those who trust in you, all those, finally, Lord, we pray for those who don't know you, who have never believed you as their Lord and Savior, that you will 
touch their hearts, you draw them to yourself. That that voice, that your Holy Spirit will continue knocking at their doors, that they will open their voice to this evening, that they will respond to your voice, and they will come to the Lord Jesus Christ. They will accept the Lord Jesus Christ as, as their Lord, and they will join this, this heavenly camp, this heavenly kingdom, the generation that, that serves you, Lord. And Lord, also finally bless Reverend Betty to uh, Mwanda, who has availed herself to, to who has shared those wonderful words. Thank you for using your servant, our dear Reverend, bless her and the family. And uh, did bless the day, glory and honor will go back to you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless you. May the Lord Amen. bless everyone.